Hello everyone, uh, in this video I will show you how we can use UART in HTML2. So let's get started. First we will create a new project in HTML2 CubeMX Cube software. Select whatever microcontroller you are using. For me I am using HTML32. F double three four R eight and select that. Then click on start project. Now first we have to enable UART. Mm, so we will go to connectivity. Select UART two and enable it. We will use asynchronous mode and hardware flow control will be disabled. Okay, and then we have to configure this. Like we will use border of one one five two two zero. And we will use word length word length of eight bits and parity none stop bit one in advanced parameters. We will leave it as default as it is. Okay. Then we have we will have to see uh, which GPIO we will use as RX or TX. Go to GPIO settings and you can see PA2 and PA3 are used as these are two GPIO. Okay. And uh, one more thing. Uh, I am using UART in, in its normal mode. Uh, if you want to use it in interrupt mode or DMA mode, you can configure the settings here. Like in, in if you want to use it in interrupt mode, then you can enable that. And if you want to use it in DMA mode, then you can create settings here. Okay. So now I am using as it is. So let's close it. And, and as you can see. PA2 and PA3 are you used as you are 2 TX and use are 2 RX. Okay. Then go to project manager. Give the name of the project whatever you want to give. Like I will give it UART.com. And this is the project location. And like my es 22 And application structure will be basic. And uh, tool chain will be MDK ARM V5. Okay, and now let's create generate generate port. The code is generating as you can see. The code is successfully generated. Now we have to select open folder. Make sure that you have a key ID installed on the system. Then go to MDK ARM and then select UART.com. Now the project is opening. Zoom it a little bit. Go to application user and go to main.c. And this is the main function as you can see. And this is where from the logic will start here. Like first we are enabling uh, the peripherals using HGL in it, and then we are configuring the clock, and then we are enabling GPIO and use R2. Okay. Now we will have to put our logic here, whatever we want in while loop or anywhere, or you can also put it here below MX UART, UART in it, and above while one loop. Okay, and you can also put in the while loop. Uh, first, let's build the project.
now the project is built successfully so let me discuss something about this function so first we have to first we will go to mx gpi unit go to go to pull definition and as you can see we are enabling first like whatever the peripheral we want to use first we have to enable the clock like we have to use gpio a and we then we will use uh, enable its clock and we enable the clock using this function hgl rcc gpio clock enable okay and then we will go to mx uart 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 unit so whatever the settings i have done in cube mx uh, it's appearing here like um, i have set the border to 115200 word length to 8 bit stop bit 1 parity none and some advanced settings okay so after configuring this we will uh, init it using hgl uart init function so let's see where we uh, have uh, PA2 and PA3 where we have initial SRF uh, so let's go to stream32 f3xx hl msp.c and as you can see we are configuring the GPIO of UART in this we have used P2, P3 and as you can see PA2 and PA3 for UART2 RTX and UART2 RX and we Init the GPI using HL GPI unit function. Okay, so let's go back. So what I want to do, show in this video is first uh, I will send a string hello from my uh, Nucleo board to the laptop to my laptop. Okay, so first let's write the code. Type HL UART transmit, and as you can see, these are the parameters that we have to send. First, uh, UART handle type, then data, uh, data uh, we can say buffer any. And its size and timeout like how much uh, after how many how much time this will go to next line the code will go to next line okay so for the UART type buffer uh, we have already declared in above so as you can see you are handle type def so we will pass this uh, huart 2 variable to here actually we will pass its address okay because it is a pointer so we will pass its address also we we'll have to create some buffer to send string so I will create here I will send the string hello and I will send I will use that buffer so copy that so put it here and the size of buffer is 5 and timeout will be used of 1 second okay so in millisecond it will be 1000 some warning here okay actually we have used a character type um, so it needs to be passed as a u int 8 type okay so we can convert it using type specifier u int 8 Now, as you can see, there is no warning now. And uh, okay, 
so we will send the, the stream again and again so let's put some delay I will put of point five second so in millisecond it will be five hundred. So yeah, let's build project again. Now I will connect my board to laptop and I will download the program onto my board. My board is connected and as you can see it's flash details appear here so let's go step now download the program using this now the code is downloaded onto my board and uh, to see uh, the string hello on my laptop i have Uh, to see the string hello on my laptop uh, I will have to use some terminal app like uh, I will use Hercules okay. I will use Hercules here first I need, I need to check at which port my board is connected so first go to device manager As you can see, it is connected in COM4. So I will select COM4 in serial port. And in COM4, board rate will be 115200 and uh, the board length is 8 bits, parity none. Okay. So let's open the port. As you can see, it is not sending anything right now because uh, I have not started the program yet. So we will start by using debug. Uh, there are two ways. Uh, you can use debug or the same. The another thing you can do is, is connect, uh, reconnect your board. Because whenever we download the code, it will not start. It will not start running. Okay. So we have to reconnect the board or. Uh, Reset the power supply, or we can use debug method here. So uh, let's start. Now you can see it is printing hello. Okay, it's very simple. So close, uh, stop the program. Now you can see it is not print printing anything. So let's get get out from debug mode now i want to explain uh, something that why we have used user2 because uh, user2 is actually a virtual com port in my uh, nuclear board and so whenever i connect the usb to my nuclear board i can uh, whatever the data you user2 transmits it will go to the that virtual com or and then go to usb Okay, so that that's why I can see from the USB port. I do not need to connect any. Uh, I do not need to connect any uh, FTDI converter. And I, as you can see, the code is running now because whenever we uh, go out from debug mode, the code will start running automatically. Okay, that's why the code is running here. And when we when I close it, 
from port close so that's the reason i have used resort to so otherwise uh, you can also use some uh, another resort like resort 1 resort 3 whatever you have on on your device but you need to connect the external FTDI converter to convert the signal from UART or UART to USB so that it can uh, show on your so that we can connect on your laptop or desktop okay because we cannot connect the UART pin as it is to our laptop we need some external converter like FTDI converter so in in my board nuclear board it is uh, having a, virtual com so it is having inbuilt FTDI converter so i do not need to connect external one okay so that's it for all, all this uh, for this video